Hi, Todd here from Urban Sound Studio, and today we're taking a look at the Rupert Neve Designs 5060 centerpiece. It is literally the centerpiece of my entire studio. It has a great monitoring section, 24 channels of analog summing inputs. You could insert outboard gear with the press of a button. You have DAW transport, and of course, most important, you get that Rupert Neve Designs full console sound in a small format that fits on a desktop. Now, if you aren't used to analog summing, you may want to start with my analog summing workflows video that shows you how to get set up in a DAW. But if you are ready, let's jump on in, take a look at the features of the 5060, listen to some sound examples, and see some different workflows that I've used over the years. To get started, I will use the four faders to adjust the balance of four stereo outputs for my DAW. Let's set this up. For this type of setup, you will need an interface with at least eight analog outputs. I now have my outputs routed as vocals, harmonic instruments, drums, and effects. This gives me real-time manual control over the faders during a mix down for a full console feel. It's also great for printing alternate mixes with a lead vocal or other elements up a dB or down a dB. I guess I'll just go crazy. We have a master fader that allows us to adjust the final mix for more headroom, print a song with a fade out, or push it up to hit the 50-60 nice and hard for musical saturation. Each fader has its own mute button, and next to it an insert button that might eliminate the need for a patch bay since you could connect outboard gear directly to the 5060. Mono switching on the back of the unit allows for easy integration of mono elements with outboard gear such as running a lead vocal through an LA-2A or a bass through a CL-1B. Eight stereo inputs are available via the rotary knobs on the top and offer the option to expand your summing mixes down the road. For a long time, I utilized all 24 inputs through the use of an Apollo X16 and X8P. This gave me 24 outputs to route into the 5060. And if you want to grow this setup even more, take advantage of additional summing inputs by first running into a 5059 satellite or 5057 orbit. Now I want to show you how I'm currently using the 5060 in my setup. I'm using the 5060 to feed the cue mixes for the artist, and the four faders allow me to hear what the artist hears. It's great during a recording session to be able to move things on the fly and monitor different signals. And the knobs at the top give me 16 inputs of analog summing for perfect recall of any DAW session. The inserts send signal regardless of whether the insert is engaged. This makes inputs one to eight perfect to route into the 5060 and then out to a headphone system. I use a Hearback Octo, and I have the ability to adjust four stereo cues or eight mono cues via the four faders. Just set the cue outputs first on your interface so that they go to the 5060. This gives me fast control, lets me check what the artist is hearing in their cue mixes, and also allows me to check individual elements while recording. Also, during tracking, I have a premium headphone amp for detailed listening to sources. The internal talkback mic allows for routing to cues one and two, and or 3-4. But lately I've been using the flexibility of running a TRS out of the back of the 5060 so that I could process my talkback mic to run to all four stereo cues and even have the opportunity to track it directly into my DAW during a session so that I can mark notes between takes. This workflow of monitoring my cues via the four faders reserves my eight stereo knobs at the top, which are inputs nine to 24, for perfect recall of my mixes. This is because I could always keep the knobs set to maximum and use levels in my DAW to push the 5060 even harder. Just first reassign your outputs in the DAW to go to inputs 9 to 24. Now let's do some listening. We'll see what the 5060 sounds like compared to an in the box mix. Let's start by listening in the box. I guess I'll just go crazy, crazy.
And now here's an analog summing mix going to inputs 9 to 24. I guess I'll just go crazy, crazy. You instantly hear the tracks come together, benefit from more headroom in the analog world, and get a much better sense of the width of the track. Silk Red preserves crisp transients with a clear mid-range. I guess I'll just go crazy, crazy. Silk Blue imparts a saturation with a nice low end bump while rounding transients. I guess I'll just go crazy, crazy. With the press of a button, we could also send our full mix to outboard gear via an insert. Let's hear how Silk Red sounds combined with my Tegler Audio Creme, which will add some compression and EQ. I guess I'll just go crazy, crazy. Let's listen to all of these examples again, but this time back to back without talking in between. There's still a bunch more features, so let's take a look at the monitoring section, the input section, and the DAW transport. Switching between three different pairs of monitors is super easy. A latchable third monitor source can be used for a subwoofer. And checking mixes in mono is right at your fingertips. The input section allows for your summing mix, which is also what I'm using when checking cues during a tracking session. 
External one is reserved for my interface out into the 5060 to check my in-the-box mix or listen to other system audio from the computer. External two, I route an eighth inch stereo jack for a quick connection of client laptops or other gear. External 3, I thought I wouldn't use at first, but I find myself being able to easily connect balanced inputs such as a Native Instruments Machina or keyboards. Indents on the big red monitor control allow you to easily find a reference level when mixing and mastering. And of course you have a transport section and a jog wheel that makes playback of sessions faster than using a mouse or a trackpad. The industry is currently trending toward Dolby Atmos and object-based mixing. Let's see how the 5060 fits into play there. While the 5060 is a unit based on mixing to stereo, we still benefit from the headroom, clarity, and Rupert Neve design sound when rendering stems. Once your stems are printed in your DAW, outputting a stereo mix with stems through the 5060 becomes super easy. And your stems now have that full console sound that can easily be adjusted as objects in a 3D space using your surround system of choice. Thanks for watching. Do you use any Rupert Neve Designs gear such as the 5060, or do you have any additional questions? If so, please leave a question or a comment in the chat below. And as always, please like this video and help support the channel by subscribing.